Hey everyone, today I'm going to talk about public coin statistical zero knowledge batch verification against malicious verifiers. It is a joint work with Ron Rottenblum and Prashant Vasudevan. So as you all probably know, zero knowledge proofs are an amazing idea. A zero knowledge proof lets a prover to convince a verifier of the validity of some statement without revealing any additional information. In this talk, we focus on statistical zero knowledge, for which both the zero knowledge and the soundness are information theoretic. So a protocol is statistical zero knowledge if it has the usual completeness and soundness properties, where the soundness is also against an unbounded prover. And the zero knowledge requirement is that for every polytime verifier, there exists a polytime simulator, such that the output of the simulator on some yes instance is distributed really closely to the distribution of the messages being sent by the prover and the verifier. Now let's say that the verifier wants to check that k different statements are all true, meaning to accept if all the statements are yes instances and to reject if at least one of the instances is a no instance. The naive solution is just to perform the basic protocol k times one time for each instance. Let's say that verifying one instance takes m communication bits. So the naive solution will take m times k communication bits. The question is if we can do better. So let's discuss a few prior works. So using the IP equals P space theorem, we can actually show batching for every problem in IP, however, with inefficient prover. The line of work of Rottenblum, Rottenblum and Reingold show batching for UP, which is a subclass of NP with communication of poly M log K, where M is the witness length. Uh, the special property about uh, this protocol is that the prover is efficient. And there is also another line of works showing batching uh, with computational soundness, however, some under crypt assumptions uh, and with really small communication complexity. So our main question is, suppose that some problem is, is in SDK, can we verify that K instances are all yes instances in zero knowledge and with no trivial communication? We think it is a natural problem and it can also be used for batch verification of signatures and public keys. In previous work with Ron and Prashant and also with Guy Rottenblum and Adam Silfond, we showed that every problem that is in NISDK is a non verifier SDK batch verification protocol with K plus polyN communication. However, it was left open if we can get a protocol also again malicious verifier. So our main result is that every problem in NIZK has a public coin statistical zero knowledge batch verification protocol with K plus poly N communication. So we improved the previous result in two ways. The first, we show a protocol that is also against malicious verifier. And secondly, we show the protocol that is public coin. Let's recall the non-interactive statistical zero knowledge model. So in this model, we have a, a CRS, a shared uniform string that both the prover and the verifier get at the beginning of the protocol. Then the prover based on this CRS and on the yes instance generates a proof, um, pi, and send it to the verifier. And then the verifier based on this uh, proof and the CRS and the instance decides if to accept or to reject. So we showed our result in two steps. In the first step, we showed the public or honest verifier statistical zero knowledge batch verification protocol, which is also nice in uh, some particular sense we will soon discuss. Uh, and the second step, we show that for every such nice protocol, there is a efficient transformation from public coin on its very first statistical zero knowledge to public coin statistical zero knowledge. So let's start with the warm up. The input is length preserving circuits. 
the yes cases are circuits that define a permutation, and the no cases would be circuits that are far from being permutation, in the sense that every image has at least two pre-images. So the way we think about k instances of this problem is as a composition. So let's go over the public coins on this very first statistical zero knowledge batching protocol. First, the very first sample sum yk and sends it to the prover. Then the prover calculates sum x1 such that the composition of the circuit on this x1 equals to this yk and send this x1 to the verifier. The verifier checks that indeed this yk is the output of the composition of the circuits on x1 and accept or reject accordingly. So let's consider the yes cases. All the circuits are permutations and permutations are invertible. So because permutations are invertible, uh, this x1 must be exist and the prover can send it. For zero knowledge, consider the simulator that first sample x1 and then compute the composition of the circuits on this x1. Since all the circuits are permutations, this yk is distributed uniformly as in the real interaction between the honest verifier and the prover, and therefore we get the zero knowledge. So let's continue to the no cases. Uh, in this case, let's consider the last no instance. So let's assume ci is the last no instance, meaning that ci plus 1 to ck are all yes instances and therefore permutations. Okay, so since the circuit ck is a permutation and yk is uniform, then xk is also uniform. We can continue with argument from ck down to ci plus 1 and therefore yi is also uniform. But now let's take a closer look at the circuit ci, which is a no instance. Uh, since it's a no instance, every image in CI has at least two pre-images. That means that the image size of CI is of size at most 2 to the n minus 1. Uh, and the probability that YI has no pre-images is at least half. In this case, it doesn't matter which uh, x1 the prover would send, it just won't yield this yi since it doesn't have pre images in the circuit ci, and therefore the verifier would reject. So now let's consider the approximate injectivity problem. So in this problem, the input is a circuit from input size n to output size m. Uh, and we think of M as a poly of N. So for the yes cases, all the delta fraction of the inputs are mapped injectively by C. So for the one minus delta fraction of the input, they are mapped injectively. And for the delta fraction, we can't really tell anything. And it may also be the case where all the inputs in the delta, delta fraction are mapped to the same image. And for the no cases, at most delta fraction of the inputs are mapped injectively. So for the one minus delta fraction of the inputs, we know they are not mapped injectively, meaning uh, every pre-image has at least one other pre-image uh, that is mapped to the same image. And for the delta fraction, again, we can't tell anything. It was shown that this problem is actually NISK hard and therefore it is enough for us to show um, a public coin statistical zero knowledge protocol for this problem. For the simplicity of this talk, we focus on the case uh, where delta equals zero. Um, it is not known to be NISDK hard, but it captures most of our main ideas. So our goal is actually to distinguish circuits that are injective from those which uh, every image has at least two pre-images. The difficulty here compared to our third example is that the output size is not the same as the input size and therefore we cannot directly compose. So we solve it by using a hash function that would map the uh, CI's output size, which is of size M, to the next 
circuit input, which is of size n. Notice that we have to hash the last circuit too. So if this function was uh, perfectly injective on the set of images of each circuit to the next circuit input, we were uh, actually uh, be done. But uh, it seems hard to construct this kind of uh, function. So at the moment, we think of G as a random function. Although we cannot really afford it by in the eventual protocol, uh, so we'll have to de-randomize it. However, we have few issues with this approach. First, let's consider a yes instance, meaning all the circuits are yes instances. They are injective. Um, and let's take a look at the last circuit, CK. So CK maps XK to YK, which is then mapped to XK plus 1 by G. Now let's take a look at the image size of CK. Although CK has output size of M, it has an image size of only 2 to the N, since it's a input sizes of size n and the CK is injective. Um, and the point here is that we don't really care about the instances that are not in the image of CK. So we don't care about the instances of uh, 0, 1 to m that are not in the uh, image of CK. And the reason for that is that they are not relevant for us. They have no pre-images under CK and they cannot be used by the prover in this protocol. So uh, with this in mind, let's think of G. G um, actually here um, hashes 2 to the n instances, relevant instances, 2 to the n uh, output instances. Uh, and in this case, a constant fraction uh, of the output instances has no pre-image under G. And therefore, if the prover um, select one of these uh, instances, it doesn't have pre-image under G, and therefore the verifier won't be able to be satisfied and would reject. So, uh, also, let's take a look. Uh, the, this error is actually being accumulated across uh, those K circuits, uh, and we cannot afford that. So we don't have actually completeness here. Know that we cannot uh, afford amplifying it um, in the sense of communication complexity and also in the sense of zero knowledge. So the solution for that is to add short auxiliary input to G. So we add some uh, auxiliary input of a uh, size uh, polylogarithmic, and then the G actually now would map um, uh, the Y's in, and in addition, there's some ZI. Okay, so as I said, auxiliary input is of size uh, polylogarithmic. Uh, and this auxiliary input actually guarantees to us that each xi has roughly the same number of pre-images. Uh, and this fact would ho also help us uh, in the next analysis. So this was the first issue. Now let's see another issue. Um, what's happening here that constant fraction of the xi also have more than one pre-image under G, more than one relevant uh, pre-image under G. So what's the issues here? Um, since uh, a constant fraction of the xi has more than one pre-images, um, let's assume that the first circuit is, is a no circuit and the rest of the circuits are yes circuits. So when we are coming to analyze the first circuit, there are many, many X2s that are consistent with the protocol, meaning there is a pass from them to the eventual uh, XK plus one. Um, so in this case, it's really easy for the prover, although it is a no case, since there are many X2s to choose from, the prover can, with high probability, 
um, find some x1 that will be mapped to uh, to yi that then will be mapped to x2 just because it has many pro, uh, options to choose from so this uh, thing is even worse when we add the auxiliary input we just talked about so our solution for that would be to use interaction uh, this interaction would ensure us that um, when we process yes circuits in every iteration there is a unique xi that is consistent with the protocol. So we do this commitment with pairwise independent hash functions. So let's see what happens when we process the first node instance from the right. Uh, let's say it's uh, the CI circuit, the first node instance from the right. So when you get to the round i, um, we can actually assume that the xi plus one is uh, uniquely determined. So let's see how we can use it. So let's see uh, the differences between the yes circuits and the no circuits. Um, for the for CI, that is a yes uh, circuit, meaning injective. Every image is exactly one pre-image. So the image size of CI is um, two to the n. However, when let's say CI is a no instance, every image is at least two pre-images. So the image of CI is at most uh, two to the n minus one. So now let's combine the auxiliary input, which is of size D. So if we have a, a yes circuit, uh, for each XI plus one, we have about two to the D pairs, uh, YI, ZI, such that first of all, G of YI, ZI is mapped to this XI plus one. And also, the yi is in the image of ci. However, for the no instances, since the image is uh, smaller, we have uh, about 2 to the d minus 1 such pairs. So now we can use a set lower bound to distinguish between the yes cases and the no cases. And that's what we are doing. Now let's go back for the adding interaction part. So some of you may might have noticed, but we have a subtle issue here. Um, and the issue is that the, indeed the prover uh, commits to an XI in each round, but she has the freedom to choose on which XI she commits to. And therefore the prover can choose XI, which would benefit her in the upcoming no circuits. And therefore, we cannot assume that the XIs are um, random. So in this talk, we ignore uh, this issue, but please feel free to contact me if you're curious about the way we eventually solved it. This concludes our public coin honest verifier statistical zero knowledge protocol. However, we still need to transform it to a protocol against malicious verifier. So let's do it. Goldreich, Sahai, and Vadhan show the transformation from public coin non verifier SDK protocol to public coin SDK protocol, but this transformation is too expensive for us in terms of communication overhead. So we modify this transformation to reduce this communication overhead. This communication overhead actually uh, was originated by um, amplification of the underlying protocol k times to uh, decrease the soundness. So our transformation is actually applicable only if the protocol has um, the property of round by round soundness introduced by Canetti et al. So we indeed show that our honest verifier SDK a batching protocol has this round by round property. Okay, so let's summarize this talk. In this talk, we showed uh, the basic idea is used to show uh, our theorem that every problem in NSDK has a public coin SDK batch verification protocol with K plus poly and communication. Um, we have some open problems that we thought of. Uh, first, a batch verification 
uh, for all IZK, not only for the subclass uh, NIZK. Second, a polylogarithmic dependence on K. Next, a constant number of rounds. Our protocol has a K iteration, so it can be interesting to find a protocol that only takes number, a constant number of rounds. And lastly, a, an efficient uh, prover. Um, so there is this work that showed that for some subset of uh, SDK, there is a protocol with an efficient prover. Um, however, we cannot really use uh, this protocol because it has um, a polynomial overhead, so we won't have um, this uh, communication if you use this protocol. Okay, so uh, that, that's it. Thank you everyone who listened. And if you have any question, please feel free to contact me.